Hi, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. and Today I want to talk about setting up my compound bow for indoor archery. So normally I use the same compound bow for indoor and outdoor archery and field archery. I have the same bow as the PSC Supra, XL, EM Cam, and I've shot a whole bunch of bows before that, but that's the current bow I'm shooting at, 60 pound. Now this time, coming up to the National Indoor Championships, I thought what I'm going to try is a 50 pound bow. Now my thinking before that, my reasoning for that was because at 60 pounds, I was getting a bit of a shake. So I tried winding the bow down, and then I thought, well, come national championships, what I often do is I try really hard. So I really focus, and what I do is I tend to aim a lot longer in competition than I would in my normal practice routine. So I tend to fatigue more in a tournament situation. It's not that my scores go down, my scores actually go up a little bit generally in tournaments, um, but I fatigue more, and I didn't want to fatigue. So what I did is I purchased this bow. This is a PSC Supra Focus XL EM. Now, I purchased it in 50 pound. That's the first thing. So people are gonna say, why did you buy this versus every, like the PSC Citation? One, I wanted to try this. It was a low, when I say low cost, it is the same as my 60 pound target bow, so it feels the same, the draw's the same, it's just lower poundage, so I'm gonna try that, I thought. So the first thing was to fit a sight to it and fit some stabilizers to it. Now, once again, I wanted to keep my costs low and I want to leave my target set up the same as it is. So I grabbed myself a cheap sight. This is a $150 sight. And this is a my bow um, scope and I bolted this on the bow and I shot it now I shot okay there was no issues with it and I'm sitting here practicing at night time and these two screws here came loose on the site and I was like well I could tighten them back up as I did and I could lock tight them right so they wouldn't come loose again but Basically, the, I purchased this bow the week before the Nationals and I was like, do you know what, I've got secondhand my old XL sights. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt one of those on. This is an old XL sight. Look, it basically hasn't changed. It's probably 15 years old. I bolted that onto my bow. So I took this off. Um, the other thing I wanted to change was this scope. So the scope itself is nice and clear. You can probably see behind me the um, picture. It's nice and clear. The lens is clear. But what I didn't like was the width here. What I saw was I saw too much of the target. What I, wanted to, what I want is a smaller scope. So basically my scope body, this thing here, covers up part of the target so it assists me in aiming. Now this is, this is not saying I'm going to shoot better than with this scope it's just saying well this is what i feel like i would like i would like a smaller scope um, i would like a defined bubble this had a really nice bubble in it this was about 120 dollars this scope um, the site was about 150. i had a cheap oh, cheap it's not actually cheap it's expensive but i had a old um scope and it had quite a big dot in it and you can see the size of the dot now this dot takes up when i aim most of the gold so when i aim at this target behind me these indoor targets the black dot takes up all of the 10 ring i don't see any of the 10 ring and most of the nine ring so i see probably half of the nine ring i'd probably like it smaller there's a lot of shooters who shoot really big dots and the reason they shoot really big dots is once you get a hole on the target then you tend to aim at that dot so by having a big dot over the target you're less likely to get target panic and start aiming at dots instead of aiming in the center so that's the reason why they do it but i thought well look i'll bolt that on and so sort of see how that goes um now originally I put a cheap set of stabilizers on because I was like, look, I don't want to fork out six, seven hundred dollars on a set of stabilizers. And this was a set of stabilizers and it was, the reason I purchased it was because they were orange. Um, so it matched the bow. Um, and it was a V-bar. So a V-bar setup. So I shot this for about three days and I shot fine. Like the arrows were good. Everything was good. 
except I had this feeling, well, I'd, I would feel more confident if my bow felt the same as my target bow. And I felt like the setup sequence for me setting up the shot should be the same for my target as indoor. So I have this big long um, dead center um, Icon X stabilized with a whole bunch of weight down the back here. This is a shrewd um, back V bar, and I've got this like flat weight here. Now this weight rests on my leg when I'm when I'm sort of loading up the shot, getting my hand hand grip in the right position. So when I kind of take the shot, this rests on my hip here. So I kind of rest like that. So I get my sort of shot set up. So I was like, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it all off of my existing target bow and put it to the indoor bow. I didn't want to do that. I want to leave my target bow being the same because I want to compare kind of scores. Anyway, I bolted that on and I'm not going to say I shot better, but I felt more comfortable in the shot sequence. I felt more comfortable in the whole shooting. I felt like I was more stable. So um, with that, I was pretty happy. Now at that stage, I was shooting so I'd wound down the bow and I was shooting 29 inches at 46 pound. Now I normally shoot towards 60 pounds, so I was shooting quite lightweight. And the first thing I did was drop the draw length to 28 and a half because I felt like I was extending too far. Um, and I was shooting these. These are VXTs from Victory. They are 350 spine with 140 grain. That's what I shoot with my 600, um, so with my 60 pound target bow. Look, these things shot awesome they're all in the gold but i thought well what happens if i shoot a 500 spined arrow an arrow that is actually suited to the bow i'm going to, what i'm going to do is i'm going to put 100 grains in the front end of it because i don't need a heavy grain point because i'm not outdoors i'm not in wind and if it gets off the bow quicker if i do something wrong it's less likely less likely to be affected so I set up a whole bunch of these. I, I brought myself 12 of these. These are Victory uh, VAPs in the Gamer Edition. Now I found no difference between the Sports, the Gamer or the Elite in my scores. So I just grabbed the um, Gamer Edition. There was, there was no reason why I chose the green ones over the yellow or the, I was just looking at my bow, over the um, red or the, or the yellow. I assume I had more of these in stock. I fletched it with orange and black to match the bow and orange biter knocks. Now I then compared, so I shot both arrows. I shot the 350s and the 500s to see which one I felt grouped better. Now I felt, again felt, like I shot great groups of the 350s. I felt like these were grouping slightly tighter. So with that, I was fairly confident and then I continued shooting arrows. So at this stage, I've got the D-loop on, I've got a basic uh, blade arrow rest. This is about $50 on the bow, um, basic D-loop. Now the peep side I put on, these are an Avalon peep um, because one of my customers had a problem with their Avalon peep. So I was like, well, let's try it and see if I've got a problem and I didn't have a problem. Now the whole size I put in here was slightly big. So when I look at my scope, my, my sort of scope, my peep is bigger than the scope itself. I've got quite a significant gap around it. So for target shooting, you'll often have your peep being the same size as your scope. You can adjust the size of your scope in your peep housing by moving it in or out. So moving your sight out decreases the size of the peep, the size of the scope, moving it in moves the peep, moves the scope in makes the scope bigger. So moving the scope in makes the scope bigger. Now I had this pretty much out a fair way. I could have moved it in to make the scope bigger. I just chose to leave it out. It wasn't much of an issue for me. Now the reason I chose a big aperture was I wanted light. So in an indoor situation, I wasn't, I didn't know where I was going to shoot. Like I've never been to the venue before, before where I went. Uh, which was a lovely venue, so hopefully I've got some pictures of it. Uh, but one of the best venues I've ever shot at. And But I didn't know that. I just thought it'd be a chicken shed, right? That's what I thought. I thought it'd be a chicken shed with poor lighting because no one's ever told me about this place. 
and staff and some of my staff actually you know belonged to that club and people hadn't told me how amazing the venue was um so i was like well what i need is i need more light because if you've got low light conditions you often can't see your scope and then you can't see the target so i was like well i'm going for a bigger peep to allow more light to come in because it over everything it's more important that you can see the target than you than not being able to see the target if you get to the venue and you can't see the target you're buggered so i went for a bigger um i went for a bigger hole in the um, peep site i didn't go for an adjustable peep um, which you could have you could have gone for a verifier and clarifier and all that sort of stuff i was just about keeping my cost down i had four days to get ready for these nationals uh, four days on this bow to get ready for the nationals and I was just like let's make this happen so that's pretty much where I'm up to um, now with indoor archery you'll find a lot of people will shoot an arrow like this 27s now for Vegas you're allowed to shoot a 27 arrow this is a thick arrow for world archery you're allowed to shoot a 23 arrow. You can see the difference in thickness. Hopefully you can see the difference in thickness between the two of them. 27 being thicker than 23. Now the reason people shoot these arrows is because more likely to break the line. So if you just slightly miss the X of the target or just miss the line, you're more likely to break the line when you shoot a fatter arrow. Now, when I shot Vegas, I shot 27s. These are the arrows I took to Vegas. Um, and I did a lot of testing before going to Vegas, comparing the arrows I normally shoot, which are the VAPs versus the 27s. Now, in the hundreds and hundreds of rounds I shot, the scores were pretty much the same between the 27s and the skinny arrows. So I, there was no like outliers where you shoot a 300 with a 27, or you shoot you know a 285 with these and your lowest is with the vaps a 290 the scores were pretty similar overall so with vegas i shot the 27s with the 23s i actually found i shot slightly lower scores than with the vaps and the 27s so i didn't shoot the 23s so leading up to this shoot, I've got four days. Now, Victory has got a new 23 shaft out called the NVX, um, which is meant to be really good. A number of my customers swear by it and say, these are the best shafts ever, you need to be shooting them. But the thing is, for me entering a tournament, I have to have confidence in the product. So it may be the best shaft ever, but for me, I wanted to have confidence that I could aim on the target. So pull back, aim, shoot, and hit the X. That's what I wanted. Um, so for me, when I got that with this setup and the VAP's 500 spine arrow, I was pretty happy to leave it there with two days to go till, till the tournament. Because to try new arrows just didn't give me the time to shoot the scores I needed to verify they're actually shooting higher scores with the fats than with the thins. I see so many people shooting fat arrows who do not shoot higher scores with fats than with skinny arrows. There could be a whole bunch of reasons for it, but they don't. And I'm like, well, it's no use shooting them if you're not going to shoot higher scores. So then we'll get back to that. So how did I shoot in the nationals? Well, I thought I shot really, really well. Um, so that's cutting to the chase. So this is my first day target. So, oh, so I shoot compound and recurve in the nationals. I shot recurve in the open section. I think I came 23rd, which is down where I normally come. I think I've been as high as um, number 16 in Australia, um, which is down a little bit, but that was okay. Um, but with the compound, I shot masters, which is over 50s. Um, now, the reason I shoot masters, well, because it's easier, yes, but I haven't been training like I used to before. I used to train four hours a day. Um, and leading to the leading up to the shop rebuild, I just haven't had the time to put in, so I shot over, over 50s. And also, also for the state championship, the nationals and the state championship are the same event. 
So if I shoot open, then I'll have to shoot open for the whole state championships and I haven't been putting in the time to be a contender. Like I think I could probably win one of the events. Um, so last year I would have won one of the events out of the four, but based on the scores I shot, but that's not enough for me to win. So I shot masters. So I think if I'm gonna shoot, then I've gotta put the time in. So anyway, this is my target from the first day. Um, that target with VAPs, um, you can see actually the target was up this way. I shot, I shot, I think that was an eight actually up there. Now let's see if that was a fat arrow, that would have been a nine. So I shot 295, 295 out of 300, that's a Vegas round. Um, I shot a single face. Now on the second day, I felt like I shot that much better. Uh, my sight pin wasn't moving at all, it was just bang, bang, bang. So that is one of my target faces, just there. You can see the two arrows there and the nine. Um, and that's my other target face there. I think there's a nine there. So I think I shot for the day, I think I shot two nines, two or three nines for the day. And that's including practice. Um, so it would have been close to shooting a 300, which is my aim to shoot a 300 at nationals or a big shoot, because I'd like to do that. So I shot 19 X's and a 15 X. That got me second place um, in Australia. Equaled a guy in the state um, who's probably a better shot than me. Um, and behind a guy in Queensland, Franz Root, who shot really, really well. Um, so I was really happy with that. So the next step for me, because I was really comfortable with the way I shot. I thought I shot really, really well, as well as any time. So I'm gonna say the 50 pounds poundage to me just worked out of sight. Um, shooting 60 pounds, I've been having some heart issues, heart pains when I'm shooting, and I didn't want that to occur in the nationals. Um, so basically I had nothing with this. It was just easy, easy draw, easy aiming. It was just easy, love, love the bow, love the setup. So my next step. So my next step will be to put a fat blade on the rest, a heavier blade, so that's a standard blade thickness, to put a wider blade and a thicker blade and get fat arrows working. Because if I could get fat arrows working, then I would, I, I would assume I'd have a chance in the open section. Um, so that's my next step. So I'll be basically leaving this bow as is and then trying getting some 23s. Like these are 23s and I'm gonna say with Victory, they have a spine. So these are spined 350. I'm gonna get some Victory's 500s because that's what I'm shooting with the, with the VAPs with the same grain, you know, basically the same kind of grain, cut down about the same, and we're gonna try those for indoors. If I can get the 23s to work, then I'll go and try and get 27s to work. Now, I did try these beforehand, and I didn't actually shoot too bad with them. Um, I just didn't have the confidence, and I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna change, because I feel like, well, I've gotta change rests so of blade thicknesses, and for practicing, I just love having a quiver full of arrows and just lobbing arrows at sort of a whole target like this. And like, if you've got a target like this in the range, then you can shoot one arrow at each target, but I like shooting clumps of arrows. So that's where I was up to with indoor. Um, so summary, light poundage was a huge winner for me. Loved it, same sort of setup, um, and just get to shoot arrows. Um, my next thing I wanna try is a smaller scope with actually a smaller dot because I found that dot a little bit big. I was kind of searching for the middle because I, I became quite confident aiming during the event. And um, so I'd like to try a smaller dot and a smaller scope. So that's where I'm sort of up to now with it. Um, I might try the Shrewd with a kind of a fiber optic, fiber optic in the housing. Um, or I think Axel has got a very small scope um, so I might try one of those. Anyway, we're going, to, we're going to spend some time experimenting with an indoor setup to try and improve my scores. Um, but now that kind of rates me a whole question whether I should be shooting 50 pound for target archery and for field archery. Um, 
So now I'm going to and touch on recurve. Um, so on recurve, I shoot, I shoot 42 pounds prior to this event and I was shooting pretty good. Um, like all my arrows were in the gold at practice. However, I've shot many in nationals and I tend to repeat the same pro problems every year. I tend to aim a lot and I fatigue in the aiming. And if I get the shot quickly, then I tend to shoot a good shot. And when I fatigue, my movements start to expand when I'm aiming and I tend to shoot bad shots. So on the day I didn't clip my limbs in properly. Um, so I missed the target. So I had three arrows up the top of the target and then three arrows down the bottom and then three arrows down here and my sights were over the joint. But anyway, I fatigued again. Um, I knew I would and I was kind of going, well, should I shoot 38 pounds, 36 pounds? Because that's where I shot my best point score. So, however, I've been shooting really well in practice and I was like, do you know what? I'm running out of time. Let's just do it and see what happens. So some of my, some of my targets were good. Um, some, some of my ends were good. They were like really good. And I felt like Brady Ellison others were not so good um, and that's the way of the recurve um, so that's my target for recurve you'll see the two shots out here this is where i held too long and basically i just pulled it out to the side i mean most of the arrows are in the gold um, indoor i think like i shot two like bullparks 255 uh, out of 300 and about close to a 266 267 out of um, 300 with a recurve but so now with recurve, my thing is I'm, I've been talking to people about it and I might try really heavy limbs and train up to it. So train heavy limbs and then shoot lighter limbs um, and just to try and build up the repetitions and build up my strength to an event. So, I mean, the Indoor Nationals is the only event you can shoot compound and recurve at one event because there's two time slots. Um, the other events you have to choose. So anyway, that's my basic indoor setup. So I'm going to go again, get your bow shooting so you feel comfortable with your scores, know where you're shooting. And when I say know where you're shooting, it would be better to go to the venue and check it out to get rid of that level of anxiety, but know how you're shooting and kind of be comfortable. Like I figured I'd shoot around a two nine, between a 292 and a 297. Um, leading into the nationals like i was shooting pretty decent in the in the practice um and i probably shot better at the event than in the practice um setting so where with recurve was a bit the other way but just get started um now changing your scope and changing those little things i don't expect big differences in your score um it's just to make you feel more comfortable when you shoot um just to build confidence so my next thing is to try the arrows um, get arrows working to see if i can get fatter arrows working and shoot the same scores with fats as i do with skinnies i'm stephen han thanks for watching bye